Sign up today for a seven-day free trial at alerts.chartguys.com. Hey everyone, checking in on the MJ space. It's going to be a bit of a shorter video here today as I'm not going to look at USMJ names for the most part. And that's because they didn't really do a whole lot. I'm looking at my screen right now and True Leave was up 1.3%. Canna Royalty OH is up 1.6%. Cure Leaf down 1.4%. Pretty much everybody within a 1% range, either red or green. And that will very quickly be erased dependent on what the Canadians names do at the open. So we do have some movement in the U.S. listed tickers of the Canadian names. Still plenty of volume and worthwhile to be watching. So a lower high every single day for the last eight days now on CGC. And we can't establish this daily high or low to get a bounce. Again, what I feel is the most likely scenario is to find a daily high or low compared to 1821 to bounce and set a daily lower high compared to 2225 and then probably drop back down for a lower high and a lower low. In my opinion, that would then lead to weekly consolidation. And weekly consolidation is already underway right now. We're just a little bit extended in the shorter term time frames. But as we pointed out, we are looking for the weekly higher low and higher high an inverse head and shoulders pattern if we are going to see a longer term sentiment shift to start Q1 2020. So that has to happen. And again, the more we pull back, we can form this weekly higher low anywhere between here and $14. And the more we pull back, the more despair we're going to see in the sector and the more people who aren't familiar with technical analysis are going to completely disregard the possibility that this happens. So again, I am not currently placing any positions or bets for this to happen, but it's something I'm keeping an eye out for and watching for signals to tell me whether or not that is taking place. So keeping an eye on the RSI, it has been cooling off hourly lower highs and lower lows. We haven't even hit hourly RSI being oversold on this entire consolidation. So that is essentially almost what, 15% of pullback with no hourly oversold, 14%. So on any bounce, I'd look at anything under $20 as a lower high, 1909 is support. After 1909, the next level is going to be a gap fill at 1880. APHA, weekday, closing down at the low, daily inside bar, bulls must hold 473. Short-term resistance is 504. And when I say must hold, that just means short-term because again, it's the same thing as CGC. And I actually like this weekly setup just a bit more for the clarity, but they're the same pattern where we have to form the weekly high or low compared to 376 and then see a bull move to break 561 resistance and see a trend change. So again, keeping an eye out for it, but I have been trading less MJ recently, gold and bull miners in the precious metals sector have been doing really well. That's where my attention has been for the most part. ACB, a gap up is for selling, especially when it's in a daily and weekly downtrend, especially when it's coming from an oversold bounce, hitting the lowest price in what years, especially when it's a rumor. Three things telling us this is a gap up for selling. We close at the low of the day when Coke comes out. And again, at this point, Hopefully I don't need to be saying this to people that are, have been watching these videos for enough time, but rumors are not worth trading off of. Yes, sometimes they're gonna win. If you wanna be gambling and go to try and get rich quick, play rumors, absolutely. If you're trying to have a sustained income trading or just adding discretionary income through trading and you want to have consistency longer term, you don't trade rumors because this is now what, the third or fourth time we've heard Coke rumors with ACB. There's an article from 14 months ago saying the same thing. And anybody that acts on that rumor, anybody that has ever acted on an ACB Coke rumor has lost money, essentially is what it boils down to. So don't act on rumors. Let the chart be your guide. Yes, you could make, you know, I played ACB. I played the oversold bounce on Tuesday, having nothing to do with the rumor. And I took my profit when I had it after a couple percent, but play the chart, play the oversold bounces. If there's an hourly trend change, sure, then you maybe have a reason to be in a short-term position. But if it's the rumor that is leading you to click the buy button, that's a huge red flag. So Coke came out and said, no, we have no plans of a CBD drink. 190 is the only support. New resistance is 208. And there's no sign of a daily trend change right now. Still standing out as the lead bear. Cron, weak close on the daily time frame as well. So this is what I was anticipating CGC to do, which it has not done. I was looking for a bounce to set the lower high and then to drop to the lower low. 
Kron hasn't hit this lower low yet. We have to break 656. But this is the setup that I was watching for on CGC with that lower high and lower low. So Kron weekly is just pretty much sideways. Not a whole lot to be seeing. We would have to see the bulls hold 637 and break 757. But again, due to the clarity of the weekly setup, CGC and APHA are going to be my guide on any kind of sector shift if that can take place. TLRY, all-time lows continue. We had an equilibrium on the daily, a tightening range. As soon as 18.07 broke and $18, it was a clear bear signal. At this point, we pulled back a solid 7, 8% from there. And the bears still have complete control on any bounce. Anything under 19.45 is a lower high. Only support are psychological levels with 16 as the next psychological support. Hexo with dilution news, all out dump, broke 156 support. Keep in mind that Canada was not trading today. So people are going to be waking up in Canada tomorrow with a big old bag. And we'll see if that adds to any downward selling pressure. Short term resistance is going to be 156 and then 165. And support, we're in a bit of free fall, 148. And that is the lowest price we've seen in a very long time. We're then looking down in the 120s, 140, 130. Not a whole lot of support down here. And on any daily bounce, we will just be looking for that lower high to be set. So Hexo is joining ACB as the lead bear in the sector. Certainly not the same market cap size, but they are the weakest. OGI looks like a daily lower high is set at 253. Support is down at 231. And then a lack of support, 227 and $2 is it. And daily exponential resistance continuing to give the bulls trouble. VFF. I like it on the four hour time frame for clarity, tightening equilibrium here. So low, high of the bounce, higher low was 561. And it looks like we set a lower high at 599. Might as well call it $6. Bulls would have to hold 561 tomorrow to remain in this tightening channel, tightening equilibrium. And we will look for a break on Monday if the bulls can maintain within this channel through tomorrow. Still bears in control, daily exponential resistance, bulls not proving anything. If we get a bull break of that pattern, it'll be the first notable shift back to the bulls since this bounce up to 795. IIPR, nice bull follow through, entered a position on Monday, sold early on Tuesday, my reason for selling. We broke the high of Monday, did not see any real follow through and then dropped back down to 74. I sold with small gains in the low $75 range. And it was just a reminder, I don't like trading IIPR, it's really hard for me to do because of lack of comfort. I'm used to trading tickers with volatility and volume. And then I jump into IIPR, it's bid and ask spread are far apart, the volume is low. So I literally sat there Tuesday morning staring with my finger on the sell button and I just had to patiently, I got bored is what it boils down to. I got bored watching IIPR. In the end, in hindsight, I sold too early, but Hourly higher low is 74.07. Bulls looking for another hourly higher low. Dividend will be distributed, I believe it is December 30th. Double check me on that. It's set to be a dollar. Keep in mind the price will adjust for the dividend distribution. So it's not like you're just going to get free money. You're going to get cash in your account and the stock price will reflect that cash being distributed. That being said, it does appear that it is bulls running it up here heading into that dividend distribution. Weekly time frame, as we know, higher low is now set and it is all about 87.20. If we break that, we have a weekly trend change and our monthly higher low being set. If we don't break 87.20 and we see profit taking, we'll have a weekly equilibrium to watch in the start of 2020. So bottom line, not a whole lot going on for the bulls out there. We know what is needed on the weekly time frames. The burden of proof is absolutely on the bulls. The bears are still comfortable on a lot of fronts. The market is in absolute bull euphoria mode, probably one of the more extreme bull euphoria cycles that I've ever seen being in trading for nine plus years. Some of the V-shaped bounces have been significant, but this is really you know, absolute euphoria. And obviously the sector is not benefiting from that. So tax loss selling, another couple days for that to be possible as an impact. We have Florida scrambling to gather the last of the signatures needed to put one of the uh, initiatives on the ballot for legalization 2020. One of the ballot, one of the initiatives already bowed out and said we can't get that many signatures. They need 766,000 signatures. 
the Make It Legal Florida, as I believe what it's called, just sent out a massive amount of mail to have people sign and send it in. I think they need 300,000 more signatures, probably by the first. It's gonna be down to the wire. We need Florida to get some real hype. If Florida doesn't get it on the ballot, it's still possible for the legislator to pass it, but we'll be looking at another six to eight states that will have medical or legal to vote on. We just want Florida in the mix because of the size of the population and the potential impact on the players that already have an established footprint there. So the bottom takeaway, don't trade off of rumors. Let the chart dictate your trading action. Speculation, hype, euphoria, I guess euphoria is missing in the sector, but speculation and hype with no real sources and people digging for desperation clues. You know, it's nice, but it gets to a point where it's like, no, we need price action to prove this to us. And it's really just bag holders hoping for a bailout, unfortunately, but that's what it boils down to. So ignore the hype. See you soon.